straight to the recipe. The full list of ingredients is down below and you can also see them here. <gasps> So let me start with wishing you guys Shubo Nova Varsho to everyone and this year may you have great memories and even greater food. Well like you all know no Bengali festival is complete without delicious platters of food and not to miss the march. So today we are going to celebrate this occasion with a delicious recipe the Katlar Kaliya. So the story of Katlar Kalia is a very interesting one. It's a classic B.A. Bari recipe which means it's a classic wedding recipe and my grandmother mentioned Katlar Kalia on so many occasions whether it was Nobobor show or Jamai Shoshti even when we were planning my sister's wedding Katlar Kalia was an integral part of the entire wedding feast. Okay, so enough about the history, let's head straight to the recipe. The full list of ingredients is down below and you can also see them here. So guys, let me tell you this, we Bengalis take our fish very seriously. And growing up, my father always said, the credit for a great fish recipe always goes to the fish first. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to marinate our juicy katla fish now. And of course, we're going to use our delicious Bengali cut today for our delicious katla recipe. Okay, so we'll start with adding some salt and turmeric powder on the fish. Make sure that you, uh, after you add these, you let the fish rest out a little bit. And if it's hot, please put it in the fridge. We don't want the fish to get all cozy and spoil our fun. Okay, so next we need to fry some onions. As you can see, it's already ready here. All you need to do is chop them finely and then golden fry them. And you can see the Mughal influence on Bengali cuisine. Uh, how it's come to Bengali cuisine is a story for another time. Okay, so next we also need to make a paste of ginger and onions. We want it to be really thick so that it adds to the gravy. Okay, so let's head straight to frying the fish now. And we're going to fry the fish in some nice mustard oil. So now that our fish is well marinated, it has been resting for a while. We will now fry the fish and gently place it in this nice mustard oil that you heat it. If you are a patty lover, you can also fry the patty along with this. Now some people love the patty, I am one of those and I remember fighting for patty so many times with my cousin, with my sister. We would all like take one patty and you know fight who will have the last piece of the patty piece. Okay, so now that our fish is completely fried, can you see how golden it has become? And time to take it off the pan now. So now that our fish is fried, it's time to move to making the kalia. Okay, so we'll start with putting some ghee onto a saucepan or a karhai on medium heat. Once your ghee is hot, let's start adding our whole spices. So uh, we're now going to add the onion and the ginger paste that we had already kept prepared. Keep tossing it so it cooks well. After you add this, keep braising it till the mixture dries up and leaves some oil. Uh, when it leaves oil, you'll know that the mixture is done and you'll see a nice brownish colour to the mixture also. So now that the paste is a little thick, time to add our powdered masalas. And you've got to mix it really nicely so that the entire masala is, gets this nice colour. So, uh, now that you see that it's become really thick and braised, it's time to add some fresh diced tomatoes in there. And uh, we're going to cook this until it becomes all mushy. And along with the tomatoes goes some sugar, which is a very intrinsic part of Bengali cooking. So there are many reasons to add sugar. First, it, Bengalis have a very vast flavour profile. Sugar helps, you know, stabilising the salt and also um, it just gives a nice caramelised texture to any curry that you make it or add it in. Okay, now our katlar kalia is almost ready. It's time to add the curd now. Uh, please remember to whisk the curd really, really well and then slowly add it to this curry and keep whisking so it does not split. I'm going to add the rest of it and you see I'm 
constantly whisking so it does not split here. So let the curd nicely settle in the gravy and again the consistency will become really thick and nice. Keep whisking as you keep pouring the curd. Now that the curd has been added, it's time to add the rest of the fried onions, some slit green chilies, and of course our raisins. You can add how many ever you like, and uh, add some water into this curry. Check for your salt, and here I'd rather add some salt. Again, give it a nice mix. So now that I've added some water, it's time to also add the fish. Let the fish slide in one by one and it will take up the entire flavor of this nice curry that you've made. You can either add a lid and let it simmer for around 4 to 5 minutes or just let it simmer as is. And as you can see, our Katlar Kale is absolutely ready for the feast. Shubho Nabobarshov to all of you. Make a lot of memories, eat a lot of delicious food. And subscribe to the channel.